for those of you who are new to mesh ops or sometimes referred to as procedural operations, I want to give you a quick overview. But if you're already familiar with mesh ops, feel free to move on to the next video. Mesh operations are a way of building a model that allows you to keep the tools that you use to build that particular model active and available. In other words, think of it as embedding the actual tools into the model itself. Whereas with standard direct modeling processes, you perform a function, then drop the tool and move on to the next tool. What's done is done. And oftentimes, if you want to make changes to something you did early on in the build process, you have to undo a lot of things and rebuild. But with mesh ops, you have access at any time to any particular tool that was used in the build process in order to modify the model. Think of mesh operations as a recipe for construction that you embed in an item layer. And at any time, you can go back and add more flour or another egg to the mix. And when it's done, just bake it. So in this video, I'd like to give you a quick little demonstration on how mesh operations actually function, as well as uh, hopefully showing you uh, some of the advantages of using mesh ops on your models. So the first thing I'm going to do, and so you can see I have an empty scene and I have an empty layer, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this little icon here, which is going to open the mesh op viewport. Then I'm going to add a, a mesh operation. I want to build a model, so I'm going to do that procedurally here and uh, go down to where it says uh, create, and uh, I'm going to add a cube. Okay, so now we have the same tools as we would have if we built the tool uh, using the standard modeling tools. And uh, you can see, however, the properties are on the right-hand side as opposed to the left-hand side when we do it with direct modeling. So we can uh, do the same sort of things, uh, scale it, uh, uh, move it, whatever we want to do with this. Um, in this case, I'm going to, let's see, resize this, but I'm going to select resize from center. And that's going to just squash it down like that evenly in both top and bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some segments. I'm going to click on the gang tool there and just um, move thy little virtual slider there. And uh, I think that's plenty for what we're going to do here. All right, so I'm dropping that tool. And uh, I want to go ahead and bevel some of these polygons. So I'm going to go to polygon. And yes, I can actually select the polygons on a procedural model here. And uh, let's do that. Let's select those few. It's fine. Now I'm going to want to bevel these. So I'm going to add an operator. And I'm going to type BEV in the little top uh, uh, search bar there. And uh, <clears throat> that's a really handy thing to use actually because there's so many mesh operations uh, that you can really get lost in this panel. So I'm going to select the polygon bevel, double click on that, and that adds it to this stack here, this uh, operation stack. So now since I had those polygons selected, I can go ahead and just grab that little widget and bring that up just like you would in a direct modeling operation. And I can scale those in a little bit. How about that? All right, let's bring it down a little bit. Okay, so that's fine. Now I want to say I want to bevel the, uh, the edges on this. So I'm going to add another bevel. And uh, we'll go to edge bevel this time. Now, because I didn't select any edges, it's going to assume I want to bevel all the edges in here. So you can see that everything is beveling. So I don't want to do that, but I want to only select those outer edges. Now I can go around and just select those and add those to a selection set here within the uh, edge bevel selection uh, pipeline here. But I don't want to do that because that might mess up if I want to change the cube at all. So what I want to do is I want to uh, go ahead and add a selection type and I'm going to go down here where it says by, select by previous operation. And so it's going to select what I had selected in the uh, polygon bevel. So, but I have to tell it that. So under here I go uh, polygon bevel is what I want to use for my selection and what part of that bevel I want to use the front part of that bevel. Now if I go ahead and maybe I need to do this so you can see the edges here. Now if I go ahead and uh, 
go to my edge bevel there so I get the uh, properties up go ahead and do an inset it's going to inset again all of these edges here it's going to do that so I don't want that so what I want to do is just the outer boundary so what do I do add another selection type and uh, you guessed it boundary edges click there and now when I go ahead and use the uh, edge bevel tool you can see here it only bevels the outer boundary and uh, let's go ahead and add some roundness to that I want to turn that back on there uh, select two right there yeah that's nice okay so that's what I wanted to do now the advantage of this type of selection here is that now I can go back and say oh maybe I wanted to uh, bevel a few more uh, polygons on my on my cube so I can go ahead and go to the polygons here and say I'm gonna select this one this one this one this one now I'm going to go ahead and go to the selection that I used for the polygon bevel select by index and I'm just going to add those selected polygons to this selection index and there we go now you can see that if I had to do this with a direct modeling process I would have had to unbevel or repair the beveling that I did originally and select new polygons or new group of polygons and bevel those so yes so this is the power of using the procedural or mesh ops